Greetings from sunny Utah and welcome to today's exciting Roots Magic webinar. My name is Michael Booth and I'm Vice President of Roots Magic and one of its developers. And also with us this afternoon is the Roots Magician himself, Bruce Busby. And Bruce, of course, is President of Roots Magic and its author. And today's topic is cleaning your family tree in Roots Magic, where we'll be talking about finding and fixing those pesky problems in your files. And I'm sure most of you out there have absolutely spotless files. <clears throat> but just in case you need to help someone whose database is less than pristine, we've got the tools and tips you need. Before we dive in, let's cover a few ground rules for the webinar. First of all, time zone differences. Uh, all of our time zones for all of our webinars are posted in Mountain Time Zone. Uh, to convert them to your local time zone, a handy website is www.thetimezoneconverter.com. Now, uh, today's webinar, the, we, it was originally scheduled for this coming Friday, and we had to move it today to today because of a, a personal conflict coming up. This webinar is being recorded, and uh, it will be available soon at rootsmagic.com slash webinars. And you are free to uh, watch these webinars again and again online, and also to download them to your own computer. And you, can, you are free to use them in meetings, user group meetings, staff trainings, etc. Whatever you need, uh, this is a service which we are offering to our users and the community. Okay, uh, to get to know the little go to webinar control panel, it's the little green box that you'll see up in the corner of your screen. It has three buttons. The top one is a red arrow button which opens up that control panel. The next button is to expand the presentation to fill up your entire screen and the last one is to raise your hand. If you click on the red arrow to open up the control panel, uh, you'll see that there's a box just for questions and a box where you can type in your questions. You just click send, your questions will appear here. And then to close your control panel, you just click on that red arrow button again to close it, to close it and make it smaller. Now regarding questions, please keep your questions on topic. If you have any general tech support questions, please email those to support at rootsmagic.com. We have many attendees here tonight or this afternoon, so we're not able to respond to every question. As Bruce is presenting, I will be in the background just kind of monitoring the questions. I'll answer as many as I can. And if I see certain trends, certain questions which, which many people are asking, I can interrupt Bruce and ask the question on your behalf. Okay, and without any further ado, I'll turn it over to Bruce. Welcome. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to talk about how to clean up your database. And I know we all think our databases are perfect and there's not a single thing wrong with it. Uh, we're going to help you help you anyways, even if, it, even if your database is perfect. We're going to help you find some of those little things that you may need to clean up. Okay, first thing I want to talk about is places. Now, if you have imported data from another program, I can almost guarantee you that you are going to have multiple copies of the same place in your database. So let's talk about how to clean up those places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the Lists menu right here, and I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to come down and select the Place List. Now when I select the place list, Roots Magic is going to bring up a list of all the places that I've entered in my database. Now, as I mentioned, you will find some places, for example, Ames, Iowa and Ames Story, Iowa, you will find some duplicates. But before I actually start kind of cleaning up the duplicates, I'm going to go into Ames Story, Iowa and I'm going to select it and then come up here and click the Edit button. I could also double click on the place name, that would do the same thing. And that's going to open up the screen where I can edit information about that place. Now this is where I can do things like enter a place node or add pictures to the place. But you'll notice there's a button here called Geocode. 
Now when I click that geocode button, watch what happens here in the latitude and longitude and in the standardized place name field. Okay, Roots Magic has a place database built into it with three and a half million place names. So when I click geocode, Roots Magic goes and finds Ames Story, Iowa and knows that the standardized place name is that with United States on the end. And it also goes ahead and puts the latitude and longitude in there. Now, I can leave my place name as is if I'd like, or if I want to use this standardized place name as my place, I can just click Use Standardized Place, and it's going to put that standardized place name up in my place field. Now, you don't always want to have to do that. There may be times when your place is a historical place, and the, his, and the standardized place name uh, is different. Well, this will let you actually keep both of them if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and save that. You'll notice that that place has now changed to my standardized place name. But now I would like to get rid of this extra Ames, Iowa. Now I could click on that, come up and click on Delete. But what's going to happen if I do that is Roots Magic is going to tell me that place is in use. There are, play, there are events in your database that are using that place. And if I delete it, all of those events are going to lose their place. So what I want to do is actually take this copy that I want to keep, click on Merge, and Roots Magic is going to bring up the Merge screen and check all of the places that I want to merge with the one I was just on. And the one I want in this case is just Ames, Iowa. Now, if there are more than one duplicate, I could select all of them here at once, choose Merge Selected Places. You'll notice that Ames, Iowa is now gone because it has been merged into this other one. What happens is every place that was using that other just Ames, Iowa is now using Ames Story, Iowa. In other words, it's gone through my whole database and any place that had that just partial place name now has the full name. Okay, now there's times when you may have places also that you don't know whether they're actually being used or not. So rather than going in to a place and actually trying to click on delete to see if it's there, what you can do is over here there's a button called unused places. When I click on unused places, Roots Magic is going to show me a list of the places in my database that I've got stored that are not being used anywhere. So if I want to clean out places that I'm not using, I can come into here and I can select this and I can say delete that and I can delete this place from the database. So I can actually go through, get rid of places that are in my database for some reason that I'm not actually using. Okay, the last thing I want to show you here on the place list, and we get it, we get a lot of requests for this, and that is, is there a way to see where a particular place is used? So if I wanted to see every place in my database that Ames, Iowa is used, I just highlight that place, click print, and I go ahead and choose the default option, print all the events in this place, and I'm, then I'm just going to click Generate Report. Now there's a couple of options that I want to point out. Um, the main one is going to be this one right here, and that is Reverse Place Names. That's useful if you're choosing the option to print all of the places, because instead of having Ames, Story, Iowa, it's going to group them Iowa, Story, Ames. It's going to reverse the place names so that geographical locations are put together. But in this case, I'm just going to print all the events in this single place, generate the report, and there's my list. I have this place. In this case, it's also showing me the latitude and longitude. And it's showing me each of the events, the person with that event. And if I happen to be using place details, and we'll cover that in a different lesson, but if I'm using place details, which is things like street names, uh, cemetery names, uh, hospital names, places that are very much more specific than just city, county, uh, state. Uh, it will also list those place details as well and show me all the events within those specific place details.
Okay, so that's how we can go about cleaning up our places. Okay, let's move on. And now we're going to talk about cleaning up our sources. And to clean up the sources, we're going to go into this same place under lists. But instead of clicking place list, we're going to choose source list. And this is going to bring up a list of the sources that we've got. And I'm intentionally using a small database so you can kind of see what's going on here. When you have multiple copies of the same source, what you can do is you can go over here and click on the Auto Merge button to have Roots Magic automatically merge all of your exact duplicate sources. Okay, this is useful, if, again, if you pull data in from another program and that program had multiple copies of the exact same source over and over. Roots Magic lets you reuse sources so you don't have to have that exact same source over and over. So I can click on Auto Merge. Roots Magic is going to ask me, would you like to merge all exact duplicate sources? I'm going to tell it yes. And Roots Magic has gotten rid of two of those three duplicate sources. Now, why did it not merge both of these? Okay, the sources have to be exactly the same and not just this title. Now, when I switch back and forth between these two, if you look over here, you're going to see a little bit of a difference. You're going to see a little bit of a change. Okay, when I switch back and forth, you're going to see it. And in case you aren't noticing, watch right there after the word department. Okay, one of them has a period in it. Now, because they're not exactly the same, that auto merge is not going to get them. Now, what I can do is if I want to keep this one with the period, I select it, I click the Merge button, and then Roots Magic asks me to select the source I want to merge. So I just choose that other copy and then say Merge them. Roots Magic is then going to bring up those two sources so that I can compare them. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about merging people later in this class. And what you're going to find is that this is a little bit different in that when you merge duplicate sources, you have to pick one or the other. Okay, Roots Magic is going to actually uh, just pick one and make everything that was using the other source point to the original source. So you can choose which one's the primary to keep and which one's the duplicate, the one that's going to get merged in. If this one right here is the one you want to keep, you can click the swap button. And that just switches them back and forth. So you get the one that you want to keep as the primary. You say merge duplicates. Roots Magic merges those two sources. And so you now have one source instead of those original four. And everything that was pointing to those four different sources are now using this one, this one source. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about a couple of things, a couple of other things. Places where you might have some errors. Okay, one of the places uh, that that errors can happen is in dates. Now, at this point, I'm not talking about people being uh, people being born after they died and things like that. We're going to come to that in a little bit. I'm going to go in to the reports and I can click on the little printer button to do that. And I'm going to choose lists. Now, there's a particular list type here called the fact list. And the fact list is kind of a, kind of a catch-all report in that it actually has a lot of different options uh, for reports having to do with various facts. So I'm going to go ahead and select create a report. And I'm going to choose what kind of a list I want. Now, I can get a list of everybody that has a particular fact type, that's missing a particular fact type, facts that have sources, facts that don't have sources. Okay, that right there, that facts that do not have sources, is a good way to check and get a list of the pieces of information in your database that you have not added documentation for. Okay, so the one I want to show you right here, though, is facts with text dates. When you enter a date in Roots Magic for any kind of a fact type, Roots Magic tries to analyze that date and does what's called parsing it to try to see if it can figure out what the day, the month, the year are. In other words, how to convert that to an actual date, how to convert that text you entered to an actual date. 
if it can't figure that out, if it can't figure out based on what you've typed in what the actual date is, it goes ahead and it lets you enter the date exactly as you entered it, but it's considered a text date. Roots Magic doesn't know what the day, month, and year are. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to click Generate Report so you can see an example of a few of these. Okay, Here is a list of facts that have text dates. And you'll notice it gives you the person's name, what the event in their life is, and what that actual date field contains. So these two, for example, the date field has the word infant in them. Okay, Infant is not an actual date, and so that is treated as a text date. Okay, so t dates that have just words in them. But you'll also notice a couple of other dates. Okay, this one right here, Phoebe Sophia Davis. You notice she's got February 29th, 1900. So does Howard Smith, and that's because it's a marriage. That's why it's actually showing in here twice. But why would February 29th, 1900 be considered a text date? The reason is, is that the year 1900 was not a leap year. Okay, I know we've all heard that a leap year is every four years, and so you, you may think 1900 was a leap year, but the rule is that every four years are a leap year unless it is a century. 1700, 1800, 1900, those are not leap years. The rule goes a little further for those who remember the year 2000, it was a leap year. Okay, the rule is that every millennium or every 400 years, I take that back, every 400 years is a leap year. So 1700, 1800, 1900 were not leap years. 2000 was a leap year. But Roots Magic, since it knows all of these rules, it knows that February 29th, 1900 was not an actual date, and so it treats that as a text date. It lets you enter it, but it treats it as a text date. Okay, Howard Smith's birth. June 9th, 1861. Okay, that's a little trickier. Now, I, I could let you try to guess all day what's wrong with that particular date, and from this screen, you probably aren't going to be able to tell. I'll give you a hint. If you are an old typewriter user, then you may be able to guess what this particular problem was. So I'm going to hop out of here, and I'm going to look at Howard Smith. He has a couple of these. So I'm going to come out of here. And I'm going to go into Howard Smith's screen right here. Oops, wrong Howard Smith. Okay, I'm going to go into Howard Smith. Okay, now here's that one date, February 29th, 1900. Now you'll notice on the edit screen, the edit screen is another hint in addition to that, that fact list, and that is that if Roots Magic cannot figure out what a date is and has it as a text date, it makes the background of that date field yellow. Okay. Now you'll notice when I select that birth date with that June 9th, 1861, that's also yellow. And at this point, you may be able to tell if you look at the one and then the last one, that last one is actually a lowercase l. And that, that was the hint. I, if, you, if you happen to be using a typewriter in the old days, you remember typewriters did not have a one key you enter to 1 by using a lowercase l. So for people that have been in that habit, Roots Magic is going to catch you on that. So you can delete that, put in a 1, and that makes it a valid date. So that fact list and choosing the option to print text dates, that is going to help you find these dates that are not legal valid dates. Okay, I'm going to go back into the reports a little bit, and under the list, there's also another report type called missing information. So if what you want, and this is not necessarily data to clean up, but this gives you a chance to find data that you're missing, that you need to find. When you select the missing information list, you can choose which fact types you want to search for people that are missing that information. So I could come in here and do your basic birth and death. In other words, show me everybody who's missing their birth or death. Now there's a couple of options that take it beyond that. I can print just the people that are missing that fact altogether, or that have that fact but the date is blank, or have that fact but the place is blank. 
Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and leave all three of those checked. I can also filter it down. I don't have to include everyone. I can select a particular group of lists, okay, I'm going to, uh, or a group or a list of people to filter that down. So I'm going to go ahead and click Generate Report. What you'll see is I've got here a list of everybody. If they are missing a piece of birth information, it's going to put an underline. I can use this as a worksheet to take along with me to, to libraries or whatever, and if I find that information, I can type in that date or, or write in that date or place. If they have their death event, both the date and the place, it doesn't bother putting that information. So for Eleanor here, it will have her birth date because that is entered, but she's missing a birth place. She has both a death date and a death place, so it doesn't actually even print that line for you. Okay, let's move on. Now we're kind of hopping around. Uh, that's why we recorded these so that you can come back and kind of watch it. Um, these are just a bunch of tools that help you to find mistakes or find problems in your database and clean them up. Okay, next, pro next thing we're going to do is under the Tools menu, we're going to use a feature called Count Trees. Now when I click Count Trees, you're going to see that Roots Magic is showing me that there are three different trees in this database. Now I've had a lot of people come up to me and tell me, that I am sure that there is only one tree in my database. I've got one tree. And I tell them to go ahead and try this, and most of the time they're surprised to find out that they don't have just one, and sometimes they have 10, 20, 50 different trees, many of them with only one person or two people in the tree. Just This is a, just a person who's floating around loose in the database and not linked to any tree at all. So my main tree, I have 201 people, and it starts with this Dr. James Smith. I also have this little small tree with five people in that, and it starts with a James Smith. And then I also have a tree with just one person in that as well. Now, if I want to see these smaller trees, I can select one and say, go to that tree. When I do that, it jumps me to that tree so that I can see if this is a tree that I need to. Uh, I need to link in to my main tree or if I need to delete or, or do whatever. So uh, that's a good way to find out if you've got data floating around that you thought was linked in because when you look at the master list of people, you're not going to be able to easily tell whether or not they're actually linked in or not. So this gives you a way to be able to do that. So I'm going to go back up, and I'm going to go back to that root person, so we're back to where we started here. Okay, next feature we're going to talk about. Sometimes you may have information, text within your file, that is wrong. You may have a person's name spelled wrong, uh, or you may have some text in a note that you need to do a search and replace for. So Roots Magic does have a search and replace command. Under the Search menu, you come down here to Search and Replace. When you select that, Roots Magic is not going to just search and replace everything in the whole file. It's going to let you narrow down which field it is that you want to do this search and replace for. So I've got some items like the person's names, and I can search in the given names, the surnames, uh, the nicknames. I can also search and replace within places. That's useful if I want to go change USA to United States everywhere. I can go do that, and that will go, let me go through the whole database and do that all at once. Okay, I also have the ability to do search and replace within multimedia file names. Within the multimedia file names, uh, that lets me, if I happen to have lost the links, uh, I can... I can go ahead and I can go ahead and search for the old original uh, path name. So, like if my pictures were in C colon slash slash pictures, and I moved those pictures to D colon slash photos, I can do a search and replace on the multimedia file names. Search for the C colon slash slash pictures 
and replace with the D colon slash slash photos. Okay. Now, when I do this search and replace, it is going to it is going to ask me to confirm each one. So, for example, let's say in this database I have all of these Smiths, and let's say that mine are all actually Smiths smell, spelled this way. Now, I can do this. I can actually fill out the match case. I'm not going to worry about that right now and tell it okay. And actually, I'm going to do surnames because I don't know anybody whose given name is Smith. And I'm going to tell it okay. And Roots Magic is going to show me, Dr. James Smith, do I want to replace that? And I can say, yes, replace that. What about Henrietta Smith? I can do that. And as I do that, it's going to show me the progress within this. Now, if I happen to know that I want to go ahead and just change them all at once, I can click Replace All. If I come to one that I don't want to replace, I can click Skip. So if I wanted to replace all of the Smith spelled S-M-I-T-H with the other spelling, I can just say Replace All, Roots Magic goes through, and you'll notice all of my Smiths have now been changed. Okay? Be careful with this feature because you know it can, it can come back to bite you if you're not really careful. Uh, so make a backup before you do this. use this feature. This also works within notes. So when you have your note fields, you can search and replace for text within all of your notes at once as well. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I am going to hop in under the Tools menu. We're going to come down to Problem Search. Now, what we've done so far is we've gone in and we've looked at uh, problems individually. We've looked at various little reports to find that. But the problem search or the problem list lets us find a bunch of different types of problems. So when I go to Tools, Problem Search, and then Problem List, Roots Magic is going to bring up this screen which gives me a bunch of options for what type of problems I want to look for. So I can look for individuals that don't have the sex field entered. Uh, it's just unknown. It's not male or female. Roots Magic can check for the proper order of events. Okay, it can make sure that a person did not die before they were born. It can check for whether the person was born uh, before their parents' marriage. You know, sometimes that's okay, but in this case, we may want to check for that. And you'll notice each one of these has a checkbox so that I can choose whether I do want to do that particular problem search or not. I can choose whether I want to search to see whether a person was born before their parents were born, born after their father died, after their mother died. And then I can also do uh, a few of these checks where it bases it on their age. Age at death should be less than 100. Okay, If you have a family and everybody is living up to be at least 100, go ahead and up that to 105 or 110, you know, 120, whatever. And that's going to find those people who are older or who died at an age older than whatever you selected. And that's going to help you find people that po probably have an incorrect birth or death date. Okay? You can find people who were born outside of a, or who were married outside of a particular age, age range. Bo married before they were 14, married after they were 70. And again, you can adjust those. Okay? The father's age when the person was born should be between these and the mother's age should be between these. So choose the options you want, click OK, and Roots Magic is going to bring up a list of the problems. Now what's great about the problem list is this is not just a simple report. If I want it in a report format, I can just come right here and click on the print button and it will give me a report with this problem list. But what's great about this is I can go in and actually fix the problems right from here. So if I go into William Henry K, it says that he died after he was buried. So I can go in here and say edit this person. Roots Magic brings up his edit screen and I can see that he was buried in 1928 and he died in 1938. Now that's actually pretty impressive being able to live for 10 years while you were buried, um, but most likely there's an incorrect number there, date there. And looking at this, December 23rd, December 26th, there's a good guess that this burial is either 1938 
or the death is 1928. One of those has been entered wrong. Um, if you know which is correct, you can go ahead and fix it right here. But if you're not sure which one's right, you can go ahead and close this and you can say, I want to add this to his to-do list so I can go back in later and, and, and search for that. So I'm going to go ahead and say, add that one to his to-do list. It brings up the to-do list and the task is death after burial. I can change that if I want the date. I can fill in whatever I need, where, what I need to do, where I need to do that, but I'm just going to go ahead and click OK for now. And I have added a to-do item to William Henry K that says, this says he died after he was buried. We need to go in there and find out what the, what the actual deal is. Okay, let's go ahead and look at Nathaniel Smith. Now this is a little different. Okay, with William Henry K, the problem that we had with him were with his events. And so we were able to just look at his information to determine whether or not uh, what we needed to do. We looked at his birth or his burial date and his death date and we knew that that was what we needed to fix. With Nathaniel Smith, it says he was born after his father's death. So we can't just look at Nathaniel's birth information. We need to see his father's death information too. So instead of clicking edit person, I click edit family. And Roots Magic's going to bring up a screen with that person's family. So there's the father who died August 13th, 1839. Nathaniel was born January 13th, 1840. So about four or five months afterwards. Okay, that's not necessarily a problem. There are people who, who are born four or five months after their father has passed away. Um, so if I'm com comfortable that this is not a problem here, what I can do is highlight this problem in the problem list and say, this is not a problem. Now when I click that, you'll notice that that problem has now disappeared from my problem list. Okay, What that means is from now on, when I run this problem list, when Roots Magic sees that as a potential problem, it's going to look and say, oh, he said this is not a problem, so I'm not going to show that. So what you can do is you can actually go through your problem list and as you fix problems, they won't appear in the list. And if they aren't a problem, you can mark them as not a problem. So again, they don't show in the list. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close this down right here. And I'm going to go back up to the tools and to problem search again. But instead of going to the problem list, I'm going to view the not a problem list. And you'll see there is that fact type or that, that particular problem, Nathaniel Knight Smythe born after father's death. Now, if I decide this actually could be a problem, I can just come up here and click on remove it from a not a problem list, and it will start showing again in that problem list. So I can add things to the, to the not a problem list and say that's not a problem, don't keep showing it to me, and if I later decide that it was a problem, I can come into here to bring it back onto the problem list. So it, it takes care of that for me. Okay. Now, now what I want to do is I want to get into something that we all know and love, and that is merging. Okay, um, I can hear everybody sitting there with, with in excitement, thinking about how much how much they enjoy merging. And uh, I'm sure if you're like me, we we put a bunch of duplicate records in our file just to make sure we can we can do this. Um, but what I've actually done is I've I've got a few uh, duplicate records that I've actually put in this file to kind of show you a little bit about merging. Now, in merging, to give a kind of an overview, what is merging? Because uh, not, not everybody knows exactly what that means. Many times, you will be working on your database, and you are going to find that you have the same person in that database more than once. Okay, in other words, if I come in and I bring up, oops, not reports. If I bring up the search screen, and I go down through here, I may find a person in this file more than once. For example, I see right here, I have James Smith, born in 1793, died in 1839, and I have him again. These are two different copies of the same person. You'll see this one right here when I highlight him. He's person number 137. This James that has the same information is person 204. 
question is, is how do we get, how do we end up getting those duplicates in there? Well, one way is if you've got a database and you bring in, you import a GEDCOM file that has some of the same names in there, you will get duplicates of the same people over and over. And sometimes it's not limited to just two people. Sometimes it's, it's going to be three and four and five copies of that same person. So what you can do is there are three, under the Tools menu, and you go to Merge, there are three different merge commands. Okay, there's Manual Merge, okay, that's the hard one, that, the one that, you, that actually takes the longest. There's Duplicate Search and Merge, and then there's Automatic Merges. So Manual Merge, if I choose Manual Merge, what that's going to do is open up a screen, and it's going to have the person that was highlighted when I did that command, it's going to have them as the primary person, and it's going to show all of their information. I can then go and select the duplicate person. That's why this is called a manual merge, because I go in and physically pick the two people. So when I select, say select duplicate person, I can do that, and I don't happen to have a duplicate person. I'll just pick junior here, though. I'm going to select that. Now, Roots Magic uses color coding. So I picked these two people, and in a lot of times, it might be easy to merge the wrong people because of the fact that, hey, they have basically the same name. But in Roots Magic's color coding, we use green to show if that information matches. So about the only information that matches for these two people is they were buried in the same place. Okay, the names are yellow because they kind of match but not exactly, and then all the rest of the information is in red because none of that information matches. So if I go in and pick two people and I see a bunch of red, I know I had better not click that button right there that says merge duplicate into primary because when I click that, it is going to combine those two records into one. Now let's go ahead and select, I'm going to go back in here and select, and we had seen these two James Smiths that had the same information, so I'm going to go pick both of them. And when I do that, you're going to see, um, you're going to see a little bit different information. You're going to see more green. You're going to see the two people they have the same birth date, birthplace, death date, death place. They have the same marriage information. Uh, they have basically the same spouse. Uh, the thing, it's yellow because the spouse isn't the actual same record number. If those both had the same record number, then that would be green also. And then you've got some different children. Okay, but I could actually look at this, and if I made the determination that this was the same person in both records, I could say merge that, and Roots Magic would merge those two records together for me and combine them into one record. Okay, if I want to use this swap button, that swaps them back and forth. Okay, so you, you, most of the time, the only reason you would swap the record is to have a different, is to pick your primary person as being the one with a particular record number. I tend to choose the one with the lowest record number as the primary person because that's most likely the one I entered myself. The one with that higher record number is probably one that I either imported in or came in from something else. Okay. Um, go ahead and close this. So that is manual merge. So like I say, that's where you pick the duplicates and you tell it to merge. Okay, the next step above that under Tools and Merge is the Duplicate Search Merge. And this is going to give you a bunch of options. And the Duplicate Search Merge, it looks for the duplicates for you. But you are going to choose whether or not to merge them. Okay, and so you can choose uh, you, you, if you want their names to be spelled the same, if you want their names to sound alike. Now, if you do that, the search is going to be a little bit slower. On a small database, that's not a big deal. On a really large database, it can make a quite a bit of a difference. Okay, you can also choose things like, do you want it to compare the birth information, birth dates, birthplaces, death dates, death places, and so on. You can also choose 
the maximum year between births and deaths. And what that means is if I choose two years between births, that will say if these two people, these two records that it finds, have the same name and the birth date is within two years of each other, go ahead and consider them a match, okay, assuming that the death years are within two years of each other as well. Now, I can change that number to zero to say the year has to be exactly the same. If I've got two records, they have to be born in the same year to be considered a match. So the smaller I make that number, the tighter Roots Magic is on that duplicate search and the fewer matches you're going to find. Okay, if you're sure that all your duplicates are almost exactly the same, go ahead and pick a nice small number. If you want to find ones that are a little bit, um, that are a little bit possibly farther apart, but maybe uh, the same, go ahead and make that number a little higher. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose the default options and say search for duplicates. And Roots Magic is going to bring up the Merge Duplicate Records screen. And what this screen is, is the list at the top is going to be a list of the duplicate records that Roots Magic found. And it's going to show me the primary person in each case and the duplicate for that person. And it's going to have a score. Now, people ask us, what does that score mean? The score doesn't mean particularly anything other than the bigger that number, the more those two records match. Okay, it's not out of 100 or anything like that. It's just that the higher that number is, the more, the more those two records match. Now, when I highlight a particular possible match, Roots Magic is going to show me that same side-by-side -side screen that we looked at in the, in the manual merge, the looking at them side-by-side, -side, seeing the color coding to see how much matches. Again, we have the swaps uh, button so that we can switch them back and forth. And so in, we, we basically have the exact same thing we had before, except Roots Magic found the matches for us. We also have the ability to merge a duplicate record into primary. In other words, merge this record into that one. When we merge records into each other, in this case, Roots Magic is going to say, those records have the same name, so this, this resulting person is only going to have the one name. It's going to say the birth date and place are the same. So it's only going to have one birth date. If I had some different information over here in the duplicate person, that information will get added to that primary person. Okay, it's going to add that. You are not ever going to lose information when you merge that duplicate person into that primary person. Now there may be times, especially when you get down lower in the list, where those two records might not be the same person. Roots Magic may say, hey, these look like they're the same person, but I'm not sure they are, you know, but, but here they are. And when you look at it, you may say they aren't. Now, in this case, I would assume these probably are, because they do have the same name, birth, and death information. But let's say, for example, that they did have some different information, and I decided that, yeah, although they kind of look the same, they aren't the same person. Well, like that problem list, I can say these two records are not a match. And when I do that, just like with the problem list, that potential set of duplicates disappears. And whenever Roots Magic in the future runs this duplicate search and it comes across those two, it's going to say those two are not the same. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and merge these, I can, when I click that, if I say merge the duplicate into the primary, you're going to see it now has merged that duplicate person into this primary person. Now, we leave that record on the screen because you may want to come here and you may want to actually go do a little cleanup. So if there, if, if there were two different birth dates and this resulting merged person had two different birth dates and you only wanted to keep one of them, you can go into the edit screen and you can get rid of that extra uh, that extra birth event if you wanted. Now, there's nothing wrong with keeping more than one birth event. If you have two different birth dates, if they are both properly sourced or properly documented, then it's appropriate and actually important to keep both of them. If you have one birth date that came from a family Bible and you have a different birth date that came from the birth certificate, you should keep both birth events along with their sources. 
okay? Because if you only keep one of them and somebody down the road gets your data and finds the other one, if you don't have that second one in there, they're going to delete the one you've added and replace it with the one they found. So keep all your conflicting information. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hop out of here. Okay, that's merging duplicate records, the duplicate search and merge. Okay, now we're going to go back to tools and we're going to go to merge again. And we're going to pick the third option, automatic merges. Now, the first merge we did was manual. That meant you found the two duplicates and you said merge them. You made that decision. The second, Roots Magic found the duplicate records, but you still told it whether or not to actually merge them. Automatic merges, it finds the duplicates, and it decides whether to merge them. Now, before you get really worried about that, Roots Magic will err on the side of safety. Okay, so there are, there are four different automatic merges. Source merge. This is where it's going to automatically merge all exact duplicate sources. And we actually talked about that at the beginning of this lesson when we were in, the master, in that master source list and we clicked that auto merge button. That's what this does. This source merge will merge all the exact duplicate sources in your database. Repository merge does the same thing except with repositories. The repository is going to be that, that library the archives, the courthouse, or whatever, where those sources are found. So it's important to merge your duplicate repositories before you merge your duplicate sources. And what you'll see is if I uncheck these right there, if I uncheck source merge, it's going to tell you source merge is required by those. In other words, if I'm going to do smart merge, I have to do source merge. So it's going to check that back up. The reason for that is what Smart Merge does, and that's the one we're going to talk about first. What Smart Merge does is it does something very similar to that duplicate search where Roots Magic looks for possible matches, possible duplicates. But instead of presenting them to you side by side and saying, do you want to merge these, Roots Magic is going to look at all of that data itself and determine for itself whether they should be merged, and if they should, it will go ahead and merge them. Okay, so if there's conflicting information between two records, in other words, if one has one birth date and one has a different birth date, Roots Magic will not merge them using that smart merge. It will not do the automatic merge. It's up to you to do that, either that duplicate search merge or the manual merge if there is information that conflicts with one another. For smart merge to work is it's going to analyze those records. It's going to take those duplicate records and it's going to analyze them. It's going to compare the names, the dates and places in the events, the parents' names and information, the spouse information. When it's absolutely positive that those two records are duplicates, it's going to merge them. Okay? It is not enough that the two records be exactly the same. They also have to have enough information. So if, for example, you have uh, two records that happen to have the same name, the same parents, and the same birth year, Roots Magic, and, and that's all they have, Roots Magic will not merge those. Because in that case, it is possible that that set of parents had a child in January that passed away, and later that year had another child, and as we've probably all seen, wanted to reuse that name. They had picked that name, and they liked it, and they reused that name. So in that case, you have two individuals with the same name, the same birth year, and the same set of parents, but Roots Magic will know we don't merge these because there's a chance they could be different people. Okay, so like I say, it does err on the side of safety. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And what Roots Magic is going to do in the background is the first thing it's going to do is merge any duplicate repositories, then any duplicate sources, then any duplicate records. Now, if you remember, before I do this, when we went in and looked at those duplicate search merges, okay, there, were, there are three records. There are three sets of duplicates. And those are all pretty high, pretty high scores. So we're going to come out of here. We're going to go to Tools. 
automatic merges, and I'm going to turn off share merge, although share it's not doesn't really matter. I'll come back to what that what that does. It doesn't actually matter if I have it turned on, but I'm going to turn that off to do the, the smart merge. Click begin merge. Roots Magic has just gone through and done that. So now when I go to tools, merge, and that duplicate search, you'll notice that there is one record that is still, and, I, and basically what that means is that although this information is the same, Roots Magic has decided there's not quite enough information for it to determine whether or not it really should merge those or not. Okay, and that's what I was saying. You can see from here that they, that they are the same record and I could come in here and merge that. So basically, when you have duplicate records, kind of the, the, the technique to use is to go into the tools, go into the automatic merges, and do the smart merge. And that is going to go get all of those really obvious mer duplicates. It's going to handle all those really obvious ones, the ones that normally you would sit around and say, Yes, they're the same. Yes, they're the same. Yes, they're the same. And then you start complaining. Why can't Roots Magic tell they are the same and just do them? That's what Smart Merge is for. So you run that, get rid of all those obvious ones. Then go to Tools, then Merge, then do the Duplicate Search Merge, and that will get the ones that are possible duplicates, but not quite as obvious. And those are the ones where you can come in and say, Merge that and take care of those duplicates. And then finally, you use the manual merge for the ones that are the same but are different. In other words, they maybe have different birth dates, but you happen to know they are the same person, but there is information that conflicts. So those are the ones, the kind of the, the last ones where you have to go actually pick the duplicates and tell it to merge those. Finally, we have this option here called View the Not Duplicates list. When I was doing that duplicate search and merge, you remember I marked one as Not Duplicates. When I click on that, this is just like that Not a Problem list, except that it's showing me records that I said are not the same. They're not duplicates, so stop showing them to me as being duplicates. Okay, so that's the, that's the Smart Merge. Now, the last one merge we're going to talk about under automatic merges is this option here called share merge. Share merge is designed to help you collaborate with other people. Okay, A lot of times you and other family members may want to kind of be working on the same database. Now in an earlier class we showed you how to use Dropbox to put a database into and you could work on the data file and when you close that database, Dropbox saved that, that database to somebody else's computer. I don't have time to go into all of that. You can go watch that other class and it talks about how to do that. The disadvantage of that was that only one person could be working on that file at a time. If you were working on that data file, that Roots Magic file, then that other person, that cousin or other family member, could not work on that file until you closed it and Dropbox synced it up onto their computer. What Share Merge does is let you and another person work on the same file and then be able to bring them together and clean up the duplicates, clean up that, the, the merges and kind of merge that data in. Now there are a couple of little gotchas, things to think about, and I'll talk about those in just a second. The way Share Merge works is any time you add a new person into Roots Magic, it will add what's called a global unique ID number, or a GUID, G-U-I-D. It adds this number to each person. Now this is not a number you can see. We don't display it. It's this long 30-something character, completely random number, but that number is guaranteed to not ever be the same for any other person in any other file. It's based on the, the hardware, the, the, the serial number from the hard drive and the, um, the exact instant that, re uh, that that record was created. So basically, for two records to have the same number, they have to be created on the exact same computer at the exact same instant. So you're not going to have any two, any two records with that same GUID. 
So what that means is I can take my database and each of my people in that file have this magical unique ID number that nobody else is going to ever have and I can send that file to a relative and they can open that up in Roots Magic and we can both start working on that file. We can both go in and add information to people. We can change information about people. We can add names. We can change names. We can add people and relationships. Then at any time, either one of us can send a copy of our database. We can create a GEDCOM and send that GEDCOM file to that other person. Okay? And they can import that GEDCOM file into their own database. Now, if you've ever heard me talk, you know I've always said, do not import GEDCOM files into your database. This is the one exception, is when you both started with the exact same database, because you can use this share merge. And what Roots Magic is going to do is if they send me a copy of their database with their changes and I import that GEDCOM into my file, I will have a bunch of duplicates. I can guarantee it. All those names that were originally in my file are going to be duplicated. But instead of having to use something like Smart Merge, where Roots Magic has to look at names and dates and places and information about the two records to decide if they're the same, Roots Magic with share merge can look at that global unique ID number. So when it looks at these two records and says, hey, these two records both have that same global ID number, in other words, my original copy and the copy that I sent to my relative and they modified and sent back, that person still has that same global ID number. Roots Magic says these two records have the same global ID number so we can merge them. We know they are the same person. It doesn't matter if the name has changed, if data in the, in the birth dates and death places have changed or been added. Roots Magic knows that they are the same record or the same person. And so Roots Magic can go ahead and merge them. Now, Roots Magic can get away with this automatic merging based on that global ID number because of the fact that it supports conflicting information. So in other words, if I go into a person's edit screen, I can have more than one birth event. Okay? I'm not limited to one birth event and storing other birth information in alternate birth facts or notes or whatever. I can have two or three or four different birth events. I can also have the person's name and I can also have alternate names. So when Roots Magic does this merge, if the information is exactly the same for the two people, it keeps the one name, the one birth event, the one death event, the one burial event, and so on. If I've made changes to the birth or my relative has made changes to the birth, when Roots Magic combines those, it is going to keep both birth events, each with their own source. So if I have a birth date, and I have a source that says this came from the family Bible, and they entered a birth date and said this came from a birth certificate, when it combines that in, if the information is different, if those two birth dates are different, Roots Magic will keep both birth events. If those two birth dates and places are exactly the same, it will have one birth event with those two sources. Okay? When a name has been changed, if the person, the relative, has changed this person's name, when, I, when Roots Magic does this merge, in this share merge, it's going to keep my person name exactly as I had it, and it's going to take the name they changed it to and add a fact type down here called alternate name. So it's not going to lose information. Okay, so that's what share merge is. That's what share merge is. Now, that Sounds great, but there are a couple of little things to think about and a couple of things where, where you, you may have to, have to kind of take this into consideration. The main one is if you have general notes for a person. Okay? In other words, the notes that are attached to the person generally. Okay? Since Roots Magic uh, cannot basically tell whether two notes are, are kind of the same, if you make a change or that relative makes a change to the general note, 
When Roots Magic does that merge, it keeps both of them if they are different. Okay, so when Roots Magic does that merge, it looks at those two general notes and says, if they're exactly the same, we just keep it. But if they're different, even if all you've done is change the spelling of one word, Roots Magic is going to say, those two notes are different, so it's going to keep them both. It's going to keep the original note, then it's going to keep uh, put a line that says merged note, and then put the other general note there. So the great thing is, is no, you don't lose any information, but if you do this share merge a lot with files that you change those general notes on a lot, then you are going to end up with your notes kind of multiplying over and over. You can go in after you do those automatic merges and delete that, but you just, that is just something to, um, uh, to keep in mind. I see a question. What does it look like when you have two birth dates? Let me go ahead and kind of show you that. If you have more than one birth event, if I come up here and say add a birth fact, and I add that other birth fact, if that other birth date is, is 10 June 1861, and we'll go ahead and put that in Logan also, and save it, that's basically what it looks like. I can have as many of these birth facts as I want. Now, usually one of them I'm going to want to consider as my primary one, one that I think is the most likely. And so if you have conflicting information here, you highlight the one you think is primary, and you just click the little primary checkbox. And it makes that one primary, so that's the one that's going to show on pedigree charts and things like that. Okay, so that's, that's an overview of merging. Like I say, there's three different types of merge. There's the manual merge, where you define the duplicates and you tell it to merge. There's the duplicate search where Roots Magic does finds the duplicates and you do the merge. And then there's the automatic where Roots Magic finds the duplicate and Roots Magic does the merge. Okay. Last thing I want to try to cover here is as I mentioned, most of the time if you get it sent a JEDCOM file, you don't want to import that into your own database. The one exception, as we mentioned, is in the is in the share merge, where you've sent a copy of your database to them, and they sent you a copy of that exact same database so that they both have that same uh, global ID number. Here's what you can do if somebody sends you a GEDCOM, and you want to see if there is information in that file that you're going to want to use. What you'll do is you'll go up here, to, and tell it you want to create a new database. Roots Magic's going to ask you, and I'm going to say, my temporary database. And you can choose whichever options you want. Click OK. And Roots Magic is going to open your temporary database side by side with your existing database. What you're going to want to do is import the GEDCOM file into this temporary database, and at this point, you can then compare what's in that temporary database with what's in your own database. Okay, now, I'm going to go ahead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a feature called drag and drop. When you open up more than one database, and in this case we have my database originally, and this temporary database I created, I can drag and drop people from one file to the other. So I'm going to click on Dr. James Smith, and I'm going to drag and drop him over to this database. And Roots Magic is going to say, who do I want to copy to that other database? Now I'm going to go ahead and choose the ancestors, and I'm only going to do three generations, because I'm going to set this up to show you something else. I could just copy just him, or I could copy ancestors and their children, their descendants. I could copy everybody that's in the same tree as him. Okay, I can also say copy everybody in the database, or let me select people from a list. That let me select people from a list is very powerful, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So in this, for right now, I'm going to just copy over Dr. James Smith for three generations, click OK, and it has copied seven people. So there are those people that I copied. You can see them right there. I copy them just by dragging and dropping them from my database into this blank one. Okay, now let's go, uh, let's kind of change gears a little bit. Let's say that this file right here on the left is my original file. I've got three generations 
uh, of data that I've entered into my file. I've worked for 20 years and that's all I've gotten, so I'm a little bit frustrated. But my cousin uh, has, has been working, you know, for the last week and has found quite a bit more information here. Now, I may, if I trust that information, and if they've only been working a week, I probably don't, but if I do trust that information, I might want to import their JEDCOM file and compare it to mine. So I would take my database, I would go up to new and create a new blank database and import the JEDCOM file into that database. So let's say this was my database on the left and on the right is the blank database I just created and imported their JEDCOM file into it. Now I can look and I can see, hey, I've got Howard Smith Sr. right here, and that JEDCOM file that I, I just imported has Howard Smith also. And I can compare, and I can see that, yes, that's the same person. But look, in that JEDCOM file I imported, it has a bunch of extra information that I don't have. So what I can do is I can drag and drop, just like I did the original time, but instead I'm going to drag him, but instead of just dropping him randomly, I'm going to drop Howard Smith Sr. onto my Howard Smith Sr. Roots Magic brings up that same screen. I'm going to say, yes, I want the ancestors, but there's a new option right here. Are Howard Smith Sr., the one I dragged, and Howard Smith Sr., the one I dropped onto, the same person? If they are, if I check this checkbox, Roots Magic is going to merge those two records. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. And what that's going to do is that is going to bring Howard Smith Sr. and that line is going to copy them over into this database, but then it's going to merge this Howard with this Howard to take care of linking the trees together. So I'm going to click OK. It's going to copy them over, and you'll see it is now linked that little twig that I dragged from the right side from that JEDCOM file into my own database. What this means is instead of importing that JEDCOM file into my database and then having to clean out all of those duplicate names, I can just drag and drop the individual little pieces of the tree that I want. Now, Roots Magic is very smart. So, for example, let's say I have Lehi in this other file, in this JEDCOM. Let's say I don't have Phoebe. Well, so if I don't have Phoebe, I can't drag and drop Phoebe onto my Phoebe, but I can drag her father onto the little click to add the father slot. Again, it's going to give me the same options, but now the question says, is Lehi the father of Phoebe? If you check this box, Roots Magic is going to add Lehi as a father. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Click OK. It brings that information over, and it is now linked Lehi and those ancestors in the father slot for Phoebe. Now, this works for any of these views, okay? It doesn't matter whether I'm on the family view or the descendant view or whatever. I can drag and drop people from any view in one file to any view in the other file, okay? Now, all I did is I just happened to drag the ancestors. I could have dragged, okay, see, I could have dragged descendants. In this case, if I had wanted all the, all the siblings as well, I could have dragged the, the ancestors and their children. I can also do things like work from the family view. So if I go to, the, to here, if I go to Howard Smith Sr., I've got Howard and Phoebe, and then I have just the one child, Howard Smith Jr. Well, I can click a child and say, well, drag this child over to here, and I can add just him, and I can say, yeah, he's a child. It brings him over, and it adds him in here. Okay, so I can drag and drop just individuals, and like I say, I can do this from any view. Okay, now, once I drag and drop over here, you'll notice that over here, Charles is actually older than Howard. So I want to rearrange these children, so I can click the little up and down arrow. And this is useful if you need, if you have children that are out of order, I can click that. And it's going to show me that, and I could just click and drag and drop those children, or I can be lazy and say sort by the birth date, and it's automatically going to take care of that if I have the birth date. And click OK, and it's going to adjust those there for me. Okay, so that's an overview of how to use drag and drop. Now, I did mention 
I did mention um, the ability, when I, when I did that drag and drop over there, the option of let me select people from a list. Okay, one of the questions that we sometimes get asked is how do I get rid of this particular branch of my tree? And so what I'm going to do is I am actually going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to delete this, delete this file here. Okay, I am back in my database. Let's say, let's say that I wanted this particular line, just the father's line. Okay, I'm not interested in the mother's line. I just want Howard Smith Jr. and these ancestors. I want just those in another file. Well, that's pretty simple. I create a new database. I go to File New, and I do my temporary file again. Although in this case, it wouldn't be temporary because this is the information I want to keep. And I would take Howard, drag him over there. I would say I want ancestors and their children, however many generations. Click OK. And there we go. Now, you'll notice on the left right here, it's not starting with Howard Smith Jr., okay, because when it drags, the person that it uses here is going to be the person with the lowest record number, okay. It has, Roots Magic really doesn't have an idea who it should actually be starting with in this case, so it's going to pull over and start with the person with the lowest record number. I can go in to Tools and go down to the File Options and I can set this, this root person, and I can pick that Dr. James Smith. Uh, actually, it's not Dr. James Smith. It was, uh, got to do this. It was Howard Smith, Jr. So I can go back over here. I can go to Tools, File Options, Root Person. And there's my Howard Smith, Jr. Select him, OK. And there we go. We're starting with Howard Smith, Jr. here. OK, so that is how we can take a piece of a line and bring it into the other. The last thing I'm going to show you here, though, we're going to delete this file. What if what you want is everything except for this line? OK. That's a little bit trickier. It's easy to say drag just this line over. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to again create a new database, my temporary file again, temporary file again. And in this case, I want, I want my whole database except for Howard Smith Sr. In other words, I want to strip out that, re that red line right there. Okay, so I am going to drag and drop somebody, and when Roots Magic comes up, I am going to pick the option, let me select people from a list. Okay, and I, what I'm going to try to do is select everybody except for Howard Smith Sr. and his line. Roots Magic brings up a list of everybody in my database. I am going to select Mark Group and choose everyone in the database. Okay, and you'll notice, what I'm doing is I am picking the actual people that I want to actually bring over into the file. So by marking everybody, if I were to select OK right now, it would bring everybody in the whole file over. But that's not what I want. I want to go down to Howard Smith Sr. and select him. And then I want to unmark a group. And when I say unmark that group, I can say I want to unmark his ancestors. And I can do just the direct ancestors or the ancestors and their children. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so what I'm doing is I am unmarking that line. So I've said I want to include everybody, but I unmark to uninclude that line. I go ahead and click OK. Roots Magic brings it over. And there we go. We now have a database that has had that particular line stripped out. Now we have had people ask, why can't I just go here and say, delete this line right here. The reason we haven't done that is because we would be getting calls from tech, for tech support forever from people saying, I just deleted this line out of my database and I want to know how to get it back. Okay, What this does is let you delete that out, but it keeps your original file intact. 
so that if you decide, oh, I didn't really mean to do it that way, you still have your original database. Okay, so that is cleaning up and fixing things in your database. So it, let's go ahead and take a few questions. Okay, we had quite a few questions on the drag and drop over what exactly is brought over when you drag and drop. Okay, when you drag and drop a person from one database into the other, everything about that person comes over, everything that's attached to that person. Okay, now if you have, okay, so, and, and that's it, like, like I say, that includes their events, birth, death, burial, it includes the sources, it includes their picture links, um, it includes alternate names, everything on that edit screen is going to come over, with the possible exception of family events, marriages, engagements, things like that. And that's if you bring over just one person. If I drag and drop one person and say, just bring that person over, it's not going to bring his marriage information over because it's not bringing his family, his couple, a couple over. If when I drag and drop, I say include uh, include his spouse, and, and so in, in bringing him over, I bring his spouse over, then all of the marriage information, the marriage, the divorce, engagement, all those family type facts, along with their notes and sources and everything, will also come over. So if you drag one person, it's going to bring everything about that person. If you drag a couple, it's going to bring everything about that couple, including the marriage information. Okay, we've had um, a couple questions on using drag and drop to combine his and her databases. Like if you want, to, if if a husband and wife keep separate files and they want to print out some charts for their kids, that include okay. both sides. Okay, well, let's go ahead and create a new blank database. And if you were doing this, my temporary file, if you were, if you had like the, the husband and the wife's database in two separate files, then this is how you could actually do that. What you would do is, let's say, and I'm not, I don't have it in two separate files, I have them in one file, so I'm going to treat this file on the right as two separate files. So I, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new database and then open up the file that has the husband's information in it. I would then click on the husband's information and drag and drop his line into this file, Howard Smith Jr. I'm going to go ahead and in, in, the, in, the, in that case I may actually say everyone in the same tree to get all those cousins and everything else. In this case I'm going to just go ahead just kind of show you, I'm going to pick the ancestors uh, and what that's going to do is that is going to bring uh, Howard, Howard Smith Jr. Howard Smith Jr. into this file. And you'll notice there on the left, I have Howard Smith Jr. It does not have a spouse. Floridale Jones is not in there. What I would then do is close this database, close the husband's database, and go to File Open and open the wife's database. When I get to the wife's database, I'm going to click and drag and drop her over into Roots Magic. And I would do the same thing. I would probably select everyone in the same tree as her. Again, I'm going to just do the ancestors because I don't want to get all this other tree here. Okay, that's going to bring that over. Now at this point, I now have Howard Smith Jr.'s and Floridale Jones's trees in this file. But you'll notice that Howard Smith Jr. is, uh, is not shown as being married. So what I need to do is after I've brought those two in, I need to link them. And the way I can link them is to highlight Howard Smith Jr., go up to the Add command, and say I want to add a spouse. And I want to, instead of saying Add New Person, in other words, I don't want to type the spouse in. She's already in there. I want to select an existing person. And that existing person is Floridale Jones. So I'm going to go ahead and select her. Click Select. Roots Magic asks if I want to add a marriage event to this couple, and I can say, sure, let's do it, and I can actually see it right there. So I can say it's 8 August 1905 in Logan, 
And then I say add that marriage event. And there they are. Now at this point I would still need to possibly bring over the children one at a time. So I could select them. If, if I want to do just a pedigree chart for the one child, I could actually just bring up Dr. James Smith, uh, just drag him over and say I want just him. Yes, he is their child. Click OK. And it brings him over and, and drops him into that little child slot. At this point, I now have a database which has both of those lines in it. And I can print the pedigree chart or the ancestor book or any of those things from it. Anything else? Okay, and then there have just been a few questions regarding um, people have had problems with multiple spouses or parents, and I think it's just a question of deleting persons or unlinking people oh, there right. on the main screen. Right. Okay. What you can do is there are cases. Let me let me actually go ahead and go to the fam. Let me go to this family record right here. Sometimes you will see a person that has what look, what it says is an unknown spouse. And when you see an unknown spouse, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a I'm going to create a kid called fake kid. And when you have and and then what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and delete the mother right here. So now when I highlight Dr. James Smith it shows he has two spouses. When I click on that, you're going to see he's one of his spouses, Mary Smith, and the other one, unknown spouse. Okay, that unknown spouse generally means that you have a person that's connected to a child, so it creates a family record, but the other spouse is not there. Now, a lot of times, that that child is already in another family. And so this particular family record is not needed. So the way to get rid of that unknown spouse is to highlight the person, come up to the spouses, and select the unknown spouse if they aren't already selected here on the family view. So now you can see that person. You see the unknown spouse, and you see this. What you're going to do to get rid of the unknown spouse is go up to the Edit menu and choose Delete and then family. When you say you want to delete a family, there's actually two options. One of those is just to unlink the family members. The other one is to delete all the family members. Now, I don't want to delete James Smith. Um, I just want to unlink him from this child to get rid of this unknown spouse. So I'm going to choose the unlinked family members. Okay, and so now when I select him, he only has one spouse. So I can click on that and the unknown spouse is now gone. So that's how you get rid of unknown spouses is bring the, bring the family view to the page with the unknown spouse, do edit, delete family, and choose the option to just unlink them from each other. Any other questions? Okay, I, there are a few uh individual questions here. Oh, what about the child? Okay, in that case, that child, when I did that delete family and did the unlink, that child is now unlinked from a family. So I could go in to the search screen, find uh, the child, I don't remember what I call it, fake kid or, yeah, fake kid. I can go find fake kid and bring that fake kid up and then do add parents and then in, like I did before instead of saying add new father I could say select existing father and then actually add him to the family that he belongs in. Um, just a reminder that this webinar was recorded and it will be made available on our website at rootsmagic.com slash webinars and you can go there to that page and you can sign up for future webinars and we also have a survey about web webinar topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Um, so thank you for coming and hope uh, uh, may your database be error free and may your merges be perfect. <laughs>